So he just showed up, like I was saying. Not sh quite sure on the year. Looks like a newer, maybe 18. Audi RS3. And I stand corrected. Uh, the fastest time he did was a 10.8, a I believe he said. But this thing's stupid clean. But anyways, he brought in the H&R uh, lowering springs. So it's going to go over the stock suspension or a stock strut. So let's get to it. All right. So this ain't going to be a full how-to video, but it's super simple. There's uh, three bolts on top. One, two, and then hidden right here. The third one. Um... Uh, Obviously remove the shock or the strut from the hub. But you want to be careful because this has adaptive suspension and there's a cord. So you want to make sure you're supporting the hub assembly with a jack or a jack sand or something. So this doesn't get yanked out and you're going to have serious problems. Um, I recommend getting the hub spreader too. This thing helps out tremendously. Uh, remove the sway bar from back here. Um, it also helps to have a triple square socket size 14 for that. Um, another big thing is you want to make sure that you remove the sensors in front just from the bottom of the control arm because you don't want that pulling off and breaking the arm on that. Uh, I believe it's for the headlights because um, it has the auto moving headlights when you turn and and um stuff so uh super simple um but i'm gonna go ahead and pull this shut out disconnect the adaptive suspension down here and pull that shut out and get a one of the h and r springs on all right so here's a disassembled product so like i was saying you want to make sure you disconnect the cord on the bottom of the strut springs off uh, dust boot top hat top bolt now let's grab uh, one of these bad boys and um, put it on now here's the assembled strut H&R springs, top hat back on, dust boot back on. Now let's throw it back in the car. So just finished up the front. Front's back on the ground. Scene looks so good. So the springs will settle in once you drive a little bit more. It'll maybe go down maybe an eighth of an inch or something. Not much more. Oh, uh, this thing looks super clean. He also has the IE intake, integrated engineering. This thing's super clean, carbon fiber. But the front looks good. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start on the rear. Give you guys a little bit of before and after. Just get started on the rear. All right, so the rears are done, or not done, but stock is out. Uh, so basically, you have to unbolt the sway bar. Same thing on the rear. The sensors in the back, you don't want to break the arms on those. Um, the shock, you want to remove the shock and then also remove the hub. But before you remove the hub, with, I mean the control arm, you want to make sure you have some type of support underneath because the compression on the spring or the it's loaded in here so if you take this bolt out this thing's just gonna shoot out so you want to make sure you have something here to support it and then once all your bolts are out then you can slowly lower down your jack and um then your spring would just come out freeze up your lower control arm and then you want to just obviously put the boot on here 
like so. Just make sure it's lined up in the same spot. Same thing on the bottom. Make sure it's lined up in the same spot. And it's kind of hard to do this with one hand. So I'm just gonna throw this one in. I'll show you guys what it looks like when it's all put together. Everything's all back in, put together. Sway bar in, shock in, hub attached. H&R Springs looks so good. I love that blue. Just finished up the rear. Damn. It's crazy what just springs make a difference. The front and the rear. Literally gives it that more little lower, not too low, but aggressive stance, especially with these wheels and tire setup too. This thing's super clean. Oh yeah. Oh what's up dog?